Hello there, welcome to Cool Talk and the second half of the 1980s. It was a time of neon colors and art deco and big hair. U.S. President Ronald Reagan would leave his mark on the decade, and the personal computer moved into the household. Now, video games were coming out of the video arcades and into the homes that people started to purchase these new products, these new consoles, Nintendos and Atari. After the advent of the birth control pill and the sexual revolution, there were more and more single parents. If you look at this graph and go ahead and pause it, you'll see how the amount of marriages per year were dropping and at the same time, the number of divorces would rise. There were more and more single parents. And with single parenthood came the changes in the nuclear family. Society would never be the same. South Florida faced an inundation of cocaine trafficking and a tremendous crime wave led by Pablo Escobar and the cocaine cowboys as they were led to be called. Miami in particular would gain a bad reputation and this was enhanced by uh, films such as Scarface and TV shows like Miami Vice. In the mid-1980s, cable channel MTV would show music videos 24 hours a day. The video and song Money for Nothing would expose the 80s materialism. It was the birth of the young professionals, the yuppies, or if you were black, the buppies. The motto, greed is good, was brought about by the character Gordon Gekko in the film Wall Street. Now the trickle down economics of the 1980s brought about mixed results. The uh, deficit would go skyrocketing at the same time though, interest rates would drop, business was good, but many were left behind. The homeless epidemic would rise. Now, Comic Relief would organize itself to help the homeless and farm aid would help destitute farmers. Meanwhile, in Africa, in Ethiopia in particular, the famine had gone on to the third year and rocker Bob Geldof organized events to bring in millions, such as Live Aid and USA for Africa. Newly elected president of Nicaragua, Daniel Ortega, would embrace socialism. In the meantime, in the Soviet Union, the Soviet leader, Chernyenko, had passed away. And along came a younger, more dynamic leader with his own ideas, Mikhail Gorbachev. By this point, Ronald Reagan decided to reach out to the Soviet Union. Both men were interested in nuclear disarmament. And in the meantime, the First Lady Nancy Reagan traveled the country with her Just Say No program for drug prevention. A new disease was on the rise. It attacked the immune system, and at first it seemed that it would attack the homosexual population. Homophobia was at an all-time high. Even though hemophiliacs like little boy Ryan White was barred from going to school, people were scared. The Surgeon General had to educate the public. And then, of course, there was the promotion of condoms as a preventive measure. The number of dead would rise, but then when rugged, handsome actor Rock Hudson, a star from the 50s, got AIDS and would later die, it put a human face on the illness. When police shot unarmed protesters in South Africa, a state of emergency was called. There was an overthrow of the government in Sudan, but in Zimbabwe, Prime Minister Mugabe's party went on to a general election and victory. Argentinian President Raúl Alfonsín would arrest former presidents Biola and Jorge Videla for crimes against humanity and corruption. After three Israelis are killed in Cyprus, Israel bombs a Palestinian headquarters in Tunis. Palestinians would hijack an Italian cruise ship, the Achilles Lauro, and they would seize 450 hostages, killing one. They later surrendered to the Egyptian government, but while being flown to Egypt, United States jets intercepted the flight and forced it to fly into Italy where they were jailed. England and Ireland signed an agreement giving the Republic a consultative role in no Northern Ireland.
You saying God is vain? No, no, not vain. Just wanting to share a good thing. Yoweri Museveni takes over in Uganda. In the Philippines, remember how President Marcos had killed political opponent Benigno Aquino. Well, Aquino's widow ran for president against Marcos, Corazon Aquino. Marcos claims victory, but accusations of fraud and corruption overwhelmed him and he fled the country. Corazon Aquino becomes the new president and Time Magazine's Woman of the Year. In Haiti, national demonstrations force President Jean-Claude Duvalier to flee the country. Mario Soares becomes Portugal's first civilian president in 60 years. In Sweden, Prime Minister Olaf Palme is shot dead by an unknown gunman. In Libya, they attack U.S. aircraft and, in retaliation, the U.S. bombs the cities of Tripoli and Benghazi. In South Africa, demonstrations are held against apartheid. There are raids against the ANC. So the South African government declares a state of emergency and detains 20,000 people. The international world condemns President P.W. Botha. Kurt Waldheim, a former United Nations Secretary General, becomes President of Austria. But then it is discovered that he had Nazi connections during World War II, strong connections. Nevertheless, he remains President and receives many world leaders, including a visit from Pope John Paul II. The first President of Mozambique, Samora Machel, dies in an air crash. It was a year of the Iran-Contra scandal, and basically it goes like this. It was discovered that the United States was selling military weapons to Iran despite the sanctions. The U.S. was doing this with the help of Israel. And this was done to secure the release of American hostages in the Middle East. Now, the profits that, were, that came from these sales was used to fund the Contras in Nicaragua even though Congress had prohibited using funds for Nicaragua. Well, the administration survived the scandal, and much of the blame was placed on Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North. World religious leaders would get together to pray for peace. A 2,600-year-old biblical text was deciphered by archaeologists. It was the Book of Numbers. In Britain occurred the first triple transplant, lung, liver, and heart. And in Chernobyl, the world's largest nuclear disaster. There was fallout all over Europe. It took place in Kyiv. 133,000 people had to be evacuated. The Statue of Liberty receives a long-needed renovation. Then, toxic gas from a volcano in Cameroon kills 20,000 people. Mike Tyson, at 20 years old, becomes the youngest heavyweight champion when he defeats Trevor Burbick.
Did you ever read this one? Lee, Elliot, don't! Lee, Lee, I'm in love with you. Oh. Joey! I, 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 I'm sorry, I have to talk. You already have a wife? Oh, no, 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 it's been over six months. I mean, I, I got a divorce. See, I never told you. Soviet leader Gorbachev campaigns for openness, glasnost, and perestroika, a new openness that wins over Westerners. He frees 140 political prisoners. And finally, Ronald Reagan and Gorbachev sign a treaty to ban all short- and medium-range nuclear weapons all over Europe. Terry Waite, an assistant to the Archbishop of Canterbury, is sent over to the Middle East to secure the release of four hostages, but then he himself is kidnapped and held for four years. The country of Chad in Africa regains territory from Libya. U.S. Senator Gary Hart withdraws from the presidential race when it's discovered that he has a mistress named Donna Rice. Two Iraqi missiles hit the USS Stark and kills 37 crew members. In Lebanon, Prime Minister Karami is killed by a terrorist bomb. Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher in England is elected to an unprecedented third term. In Mecca, riots break out and 400 pilgrims die. Klaus Barbie, a former Nazi, was found, arrested, and sentenced to jail for life for crimes against humanity. It was a year of the first surrogate mother lawsuit. A woman by the name of Mary Whitehead agreed to be a surrogate mother for a couple named the Stearns. But after having the baby, who the press would call Baby M, Mary Whitehead decided that she wanted to keep the baby. This went all the way to court. In the end, the Stearns won. But at the same time, it raised a lot of ethical questions when it came to surrogate and biological motherhood. Let's go get some payback. The president of Taiwan, Chiang Ching Kuo, dies. Laos and Thailand fight for weeks over a border dispute. After that, a ceasefire was called. In a United States court, an indictment was presented against Panamanian leader General Manuel Noriega for drug smuggling. The United Kingdom sends an SAS unit to shoot and kill dead three IRA bombers in Gibraltar. At the funeral, Protestant gunmen kill three more and wound 50. Then at the funeral of those victims, two soldiers were killed. 
Romanian leader President Ceausescu announces that he will demolish villages and resettle people in new towns. The Nicaraguan government and the Contras sign a ceasefire. Ethiopia and Somalia sign a peace treaty after 11 years of border disputes. Israeli secret agents kill Palestinian leader Abu Jihad. The Soviet Union begins pulling out its troops from Afghanistan after a nine-year occupation. The President of Pakistan, General Mohammad Zia al-Haq, dies when his airplane explodes. Sabotage is suspected. And so, Benazir Bhutto becomes the first female Prime Minister. Salman Rushdie's book, The Satanic Verses, is attacked by Muslim who hate it for blasphemy. A death warrant is placed on his head and he goes into hiding, and he is still hiding today. Fully paying you still? Give a week. How much? Mm -hmm. That's between him and me. Highway robbery. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that green, for lack of a better word, is good. Televangelist Jimmy Swaggart is disgraced when he's caught visiting prostitutes. Stephen Hawkins enhances the Big Bang Theory with his book, A Brief History of Time. It was a year of disasters, earthquakes in China, earthquakes in Armenia, and a tidal wave in Bangladesh. Thousands would die. Japanese Emperor Hirohito dies. After 35 years in power, Paraguayan President Alfredo Strassner was ousted. He was exiled to Brazil. In the United States, a new president was sworn in, George H.W. Bush. President Botha of South Africa resigns. He is succeeded by F.W. de Klerk. In Czechoslovakia, playwright Vaclav Havel, a dissident, is put in jail, but there were massive peaceful protests. The president resigns, and then a new, new mostly non-communist government is formed, and by December, the playwright Havel becomes the new president. China establishes martial law in Tibet because of the anti-Chinese protest. In Lebanon, Christians and Islamic groups, militants, throw shells at each other and hundreds would die. China, there were students protesting, proclaiming pro-democracy in Tiananmen Square where they occupied for seven weeks. The government puts down martial law, tanks, dispensed the crowd, and there were many dead, perhaps thousands. For his role in the Iran-Contra affair of a year earlier, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North receives a three-year suspended sentence and a $150,000 fine. General Colin Powell becomes the first black Chairman Chief of Staff of the United States. Former Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos dies. In Germany, thousands of East Germans escaped 
to West Germany through Hungary. The president and the communist government resign and a reform government takes over. The Berlin Wall, which had separated Berlin into East and West, was demolished. It was historical. In Romania, heavy protests broke out and the government was overthrown. President Ceausescu and his wife were tried, sentenced, and executed. It was mostly a kangaroo court. They were allowed to appeal, but were executed before the appeal could even take place. The United Kingdom repatriates thousands of Vietnamese refugees known as the Boat People, and they were sent to Hong Kong. Jim Baker, televangelist, was convicted of fraud and for embezzling $3.7 million. In Iran, the Ayatollah Khomeini died. Serial killer Ted Bundy is executed in Florida. When the captain of the Exxon Valdez oil cruiser fell asleep because he was drunk, they crashed into Alaska and spilled 11 million gallons of oil on the coast. The cleanup would take years. President Bush rescues the savings and loan industry from collapse by allocating them $300 billion. Baseball player Pete Rose is banned from baseball for gambling. Okay, now what What do I have left? Two jacks, one eight, one king, one six. Two aces, one ten, one nine, one five. One five. Uh, you don't like me much, do you, boss? Sure I like you. I just don't share your sense of humor. Sometimes that's all you got left. That's it, and my next video will be on the 1990s, but in the meantime, click below and subscribe. Thanks for watching, this is Cool Talk.